All right, we back. Another episode of Club 520 Podcast. A little bit different this time. Season two. We made it to the second season. Appreciate y'all. You know what I'm saying? We got a special guest. We got family with us. But before we get to the episode, we got to talk about what we're doing right now. Y'all, we've been stalling y'all out. You know what I'm saying? I've been looking for the episode with Edge. But there's a reason why we got this episode here. Jeff, you want to tell people what we got going on right now? Oh, man. He threw it to me, Paul. <laughs> that was nuts. Uh, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> But nah, shout out What's to up? the volume, man. Hey. Uh, we finally sealed, signed, sealed, delivered with the volume. Um, a huge opportunity, a huge, huge chance to be great. I'm excited. My guys got it rolling. Be he got no sunglasses. Signed. His sunglasses are different. <laughs> What's them? Finally, finally. What are those? <laughs> Gucci, Prada, <laughs> Louie. <laughs> you hear me? We are. <laughs> <laughs> the whole sex. <laughs> Shout out to the volume, though. We definitely appreciate y'all. We can't wait to start this new journey with you all. We excited. Hey, sure. shout out to the volume. Appreciate y'all. We going crazy right now. Season 2 Club 520 Podcast. My name is still DJ Wells. I'm the host. Like I said, we got a legend. And more important, family me to my left. We going to introduce my man's last. But my boy out the prillies be here. You know what I'm saying? It's Looking time. like new money today. It's time. It's time. The volume got me lit. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> Direct deposit, baby. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Uncle Shannon. <laughs> Shout out to Colin. <laughs> Shout out to the whole gang and the behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Helping us out on this new journey. We appreciate everything for sure. Absolutely. Season two kickoff. Season two to my right. My boy. Hey, look, he laughing. Look, he a different nigga now. <laughs> I, knew, I said somebody was going to go Hollywood. We figured out who it was. Oh, we put that in the ball. There you go. You see, the, you see that towel? Oh, yeah. Right. Right, so, we so see that all season one. As soon as I seen that, uh, that, that, that motherfucking email that with them numbers, I said, oh, here we go. I love the volume. <laughs> 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 we like Jeffrey Milwaukee <laughs> man, <laughs> the first time. <laughs> man, facts. <laughs> but to my right, my dog, Young Nacho, Young Tig, how you what? Man, I'm good, man. I'm happy. Uh, I'm happy season two back around. Got my guy here. I'm going to let you introduce him the right way. But, man, these was about it, though, man. Somebody said they were looking for some concords. I said, let me go get these. Not the DMPs, though. It wasn't somebody. The somebody was me. <laughs> oh, my fault. It's me. I'm niggas. I was looking for some concords and he disrespected Sometimes came Sometimes you got a stun on nigga, but hey, it's cool. <laughs> mm-hmm. Season two niggas acting different. <laughs> but last but not least, man, we are blessed to have a legend in our presence, a legend in the city, a legend in his sport, a legend in his profession. Dog, one of the biggest culture changes to ever happen to Indianapolis, Indiana and in the NFL. We got family with us again. The Edge, Edwin James, my man. Appreciate you pulling back up to 520, man. Appreciate I'm you. part of 520, Yeah, man. you gang. You fam. That's why I said we ain't nap even got a guest. This fam, yeah. we nap town royalty, edge. this motherfucker. Go yeah, teeth to go, time. Jack. You already know how we slide. You are yeah, already, sure. man. Look, we did an episode before, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying? You would be here and getting it in on the court. Hey, yo. On the court. Let me finish. I got y'all. I ain't going to put you in a bad situation, especially not Edge. But, nah, dude, it ain't gonna be bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to run it back because shit, we started off a new situation. What better to start the new situation off with a legend? For sure. And we talked about the body doll T got the heat on today being disrespectful. For you, you know what I'm saying? You say you're not really into that typical world, but I gotta ask, how did it feel the first time you was out and you seen somebody in your jersey? Nah, it was pretty cool. Like it started in college though. Mm, you know, ain't... when you come in front of the University of Miami, and then once you like once you start, be, when you become, then you start seeing it. And then when you get to the pros, it's like you're already kind of used to it, but it's just more. Everything is magnified in the pros. And that's the thing that is it's pretty cool. And it's actually like coming to a city like this, you know, it was totally different. You know, so it was different for me. And then when you start seeing them people embrace you, it's like they really, they really rocking with us, you know, and it was actually pretty cool. And that's what's fire, because like I remember seeing that 32 jersey around, like, now nah, that's Edge. But like now, fast forward, I was out in the grocery store and seen a little kid in the A Rich jersey. And I was like, that Denver feel like that same feeling yeah. of like that change in culture in the city. Like before you came to Indianapolis, it was not like this. And your imprint on the city was immediate. And nah, to see my that guy, now, my guy stole some jerseys from for some Edwin James jerseys for me. <laughs> oh, no, nah, no, no, I ain't even joking. <laughs> Statues of limitations is yeah, up. Yeah, I ain't tripping. It. Shout out to my boy Jaren. He, <laughs> oh. he went crazy for that guy. Nigga stole the jersey. With Man, what? Why was that guy in mm. seventh grade? 
Did, I you was have, like, did you have a screen print? Yeah, you already know. We ain't, uh, it was okay. gallons. We ain't, <laughs> wasn't authentic. Now. Yeah, a lot but gearing up. He, he, <laughs> he grabbed the uh, Peyton Manning. Brung to school, I was like, nah, you gotta get that edge though. And he got the came back with the edge the next time. The, the police came two weeks later. Wow. So wait a minute. My you, boy was on house arrest. Teague is out of pocket. Seven. I'm gonna tell you why. Cause he had a booster go back. <laughs> you cannot have an Alec Hart with a booster. <laughs> Charles the White, I keep telling y'all. I mean, that was well, that's 20, that's 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, I wanna go like, back to the beginning though, bro. Who put the football in your hand or who signed you up first? Like when did you, you know, start taking football like you know, South Florida, like that's what we do. Like you yeah. come out the womb, like football is what you do in South Florida. And you know, with the weather, mm -hmm. like we play year round. And for for somebody like myself, you know, it's like you got like you got to show these older guys I belong. That's kind of that's kind of how you get ranked. That's kind of how you like really step outside of um your age group. You know, if you nine and you playing with 10 and 11 years old. Um, kids, yeah. like you represent now, you gonna get ultimate respect. Cause ain't nothing like, like showing an older person up. You yeah, know, for sure. When you when you between, it's a big difference between nine and eleven. You know, sure. and so, so when cool. you when you represent like that, and now you got everybody respect. And then when you go into, like you go to a Sandlot football field, you one of the first ones getting picked. You getting picked before the older guys. And that's what that's what made the game mean so much to you. And plus, it was easy for me. Was you out there you know? chasing rabbits and shit? No, nah, that's like <laughs> on the they're like Fred Tatum area. You know, that's Fred uh, Tatum. That's area. What's it called? Pahokee and Bear. Yeah, Green. I had some uh, uniform yeah. waiting boys, for them. Them boys, boys fast. Uh, boy. What's my boy receiver? Uh, play for Baltimore. Uh, was a monster too. He from Pahokee. From Baltimore. Damn. From the yeah, Baltimore I, Ravens. I, I, I feel bad for Quan. Yeah. And Kwan. yeah. Bolden, yeah. Bolden, oh yeah, Bolden. legend. I feel I'm bad for disrespect. I should have knew that off top, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody play ball down there. You know, like we play ball, and like that's that's your life. And it's like, like if you don't, you ain't playing ball, man. You ain't you ain't what's up. Oh, Did you man. always play running back, or you was like yeah. court? I played I played running back, and I played um. Safety and line. I was say, I know you were a quarterback because I seen you like, shoot downstairs. So ooh, yeah, I know yeah. that jumper. You know, what I mean, that accuracy ain't like that. So <laughs> oh, I knew running man. back. <laughs> don't, don't, hey, pull the footage out. <laughs> hey, y'all don't be trying to sign me no, to no ten day contract. after you see this footage? Nah. They see that footage, they are gonna like, damn, it's nah. can't miss. He I'm probably the best fucking... shooting football player I ever see. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Not real shit. He got nah, he, hey, nah, don't. Don't don't no, rank, don't rank my hustle, man. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna blow up his spot, man. Don't fuck. blow it up, man. I've been running this game for a long time, man. <laughs> man he came they, in they here, edge man. Can't nothing. Hey, he came in here. And, hey, man, man. I ain't gonna really talk about. Nah, that, he man. wasn't crazy. Edge with yeah. the hit with the rope up real quick, man. man. <laughs> what? If he ain't Ali, I don't know who is. Smooth for that. <laughs> Put that Tito's voice on that boy. <laughs> <laughs> he thought it was a layup. I see that first yeah, free throw. Yeah, he shot I that said, first oh, shot. This nigga sweet. <laughs> hey, he thought he had something sweet. Like, yeah, my nigga, my boy took a bad bet though. I ain't yeah, know. Yeah, hey, he took a bad bet. Man, that first that. shot, I was like, I really didn't know damn, he took really a football. Hey, we don't, we don't rock like that. So I, like, I, hey, I didn't but, know he took but, that bad bet. But bad man, like that. that that wasn't even aimed at you, man. It wasn't aimed I at know, you, I man. Know. You but, took the smoke. I took it. But it's you not know how the old folks say you go to meddling in people's yeah. business. Because mm. that's why I said that we started, and then I didn't know you took yeah, that. Yeah, he, he took that bad. He took a was horrible so bad. with the shot. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, he ain't got, he ain't got a chance. All man, of a sudden, he didn't even so, holler at me. We were supposed to go to like the side and pound all of a sudden. <laughs> It started looking fluid, pause. I'm like, yeah, man, that was crazy. Because I was saying, yeah, that was crazy. One thing you can remember, man, if you see me doing it, I got a chance. Mm. Uh, if you see me doing anything, I got a chance. Now, I ain't got to say I'm the best or the greatest at it, but yeah. I got a chance. We're yeah, going to get like, on them dice, though, but what? Uh, <laughs> so there you go. There you <laughs> go. Throw your ass on them dice now. Uh, what, what made you choose the you? The you, that's like, that's the heart and soul of South Florida. You know, the only thing, the, um, the only reason you look anywhere other than the U is the U was um, going through probation. They, was, they had all these sanctions and all that stuff going. So you had to start looking at other places, mm -hmm. but just in case you didn't know, know what the outcome would be. But once they, once they said, okay, this the penalty, these things you got to deal with, it's a no-brainer. You know, yeah. I grew up an hour west of Miami, so it was like, it was easier for my family, friends, everybody to come. 
And, you know, like we close knit. And so you want people at your game, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. I went to visit Ohio State. You know, I went up there and it's like, they only gonna give you four tickets to the game. You gotta mm. get up there. Yeah. Like, we're not financially stable. We're not in position to be traveling. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna be up here by myself, really. I ain't gonna really have nobody at the game. And it's, you know, and then, of course, you got the Florida schools. Yeah. You know, went to, um, I visit Florida Gators. They had Fred T. Yeah. So Fred T out the same area, and Fred T was, no, he was already was he solidified. Nah, he, he was, was a year above you, right? He was a year ahead of me. Okay. So he was already stamped. So it yeah. was like, that's not somewhere you want to go if you're trying to, if you're trying to like your put your on. game down. Yeah. And so Miami was, it was a no-brainer. Like you always want to be a hurricane. Like a hurricane is like everything. And then it fits me. Like as a Miami hurricane, you could be yourself. Like other places you got like a lot of dudes, they used to go to Tallahassee, the Florida State, and you had to cut your hair, you had to be clean cut. Like in Miami, you could just rock out, be yourself. And I don't want going for that. Yeah, that's what, yeah. That but like, whip too, yeah, bro. like we, we couldn't do that. Like we got to go where you can be yourself and you can hang loose, you know what I'm saying? You can just go do your thing, be you, and then everybody gonna embrace you because it's like a big melting pot. You know, it's yeah. every race, is every culture, everything's down there. So it's like, it's like one, it's, to me, it's the best place in the world. I was out watching like Santana <clears throat> Moss and Reggie Wayne go at it. Right. No, nah, that was, but that would made it so cool. Like practice was, practice was lit because yeah. every day you're going at it. You know, every day you seeing, you seeing people compete. And so now when you, now when I look at football, I look at it a little different because they don't really compete or it don't seem like that to myself, but it's a, they don't have to. They still going to be able to have success or do what they do. But we come from a different era where you had to compete. You had to whine and cry to get the ball. Now they got people checking out, coming out the game, don't want to play. Like with us, it was like that ball meant everything. Like, Was that ever any friction between y'all three? Friction? Nah, because it always worked together. You know, like we, with us, it's, man, we going to ball out. Like yeah. everybody pushing each other. You know, the goal is to get to the league. We want to sure. get to the league. And then all of a sudden, all of us in the league at the same time. Then it turned around to where we go all call and we say, we're we, we going to see who's going to make the highlight, who's going to make ESPN. Like, we had our own little battles within, like, I'm going to make ESPN. I'm going to make the highlights. And we kept pushing each other. And that would make that school so special because everybody pushed each other. Everybody checked in. And we all worked out in the offseason. It was like one meeting spot. Everybody push up, get that work in, then hit the city, enjoy the fruits of your label. <laughs> and just show everybody like this how you it's like good balance. Yeah. Like you gotta have a good balance. Squad, boy. Now I got a question for you. I know you see how it's going now. How you feel you would have fared with that NIL money, especially being in Miami? I I really don't know because it's like I don't like me personally, I think I probably would have did well, but like that's a distraction too. Mm. Because it's like you can go for that little money or you can go for that big money. You know, the big money is getting to the league. The goal is to get to the NFL. And so you got, like, I see a lot of kids right now, they're sacrificing their future for right now. And so that's, I mean, this thing is to be determined, but right now it don't look too good for a lot of kids, you know. They're going to cheat themselves. That's interesting that you say sacrificing, because like you said, you are getting a check now. But like you said, if you ain't disciplined, or you ain't focused, or you don't have that team behind you with that money, it can hinder you from getting that next check. Like, even with you now, you know what I'm saying, you coaching, and you seeing kids in high school getting approached with that type of situation, it's hard for adults to handle that bread. For them to get approached with that type of bread now, 16, 17, how do you keep their head on the prize or their mind on the go? See, I'm different. I got a different approach from Edge. I'm more like, I know how many people play basketball. And the window is so small to get to the NBA. So I'm like, you might not make it. The goal is to make it, but you might not. But you need to capitalize on what you got going on now. Absolutely. Like, if you killing now, you making it now, and somebody want to give you a million dollars right now, yeah, go ahead and take care of some stuff that you might not. Like, if you go to the real world, you might, you're not making a million dollars. Yeah. That's real. You're not. Yeah. No, I but if you can make it right now, get it, start your life, get a head start on life, I'm cool with that. But... That's just my I'll take because I know I how hard it is. I just think the timing, like, man, you you getting money at 17, 18, 19, like, we're not educated. And then nah, we're not, not coming from, like, you're not coming from educated households. 
But so right. it's like the blind leading the blind, and we don't have nobody that's been there, done that, that can teach somebody. And that's I think that's the problem. But it's kind of different though, because most of these kids be having agents. Like once they start getting nil deals, they be having agents. Yeah, they but be still, signed with companies. They still don't know. Like I you, mean, you don't yeah, know personally. Yeah, you don't know. I said you don't know personally. You, yeah. you hope people do right by you. That's real. But that's, yeah, it's man, it's like. In our sport, you know, it's still 70, 80% of everybody go flat. You know, yeah. I don't know what the percentage is in y'all sport and it's NBA. About the same. And so it's like, there's a reason behind that. And I think <clears throat> the reason has to do with the timing. You know, it's like you think about what you'll do with your money at 25 or 30 versus when you're 17, 18. Like, you know, like our, our priorities are different. Mm -hmm. You know, we're thinking about having fun, we're thinking about, Getting the new J's, sneak ahead. You know, we okay. we doing all that. You know, we doing Respect. all that fly stuff. You Facts. know, but we don't really think about down the road. And I think that's that's where the problem comes because it's like over all of all those after all those years, why the percentages stay in the same? You know, we it's like you going into the NBA or you going into the NFL, and I'm telling you that seventy eight to eighty percent of the athletes go broke, and you know this. Mm -hmm. And it still happened, yeah. you know. So, and I just think it has to do with, you know, financial education from an early standpoint. And then where we coming from? Like yeah. we coming from broken homes. Yeah. And that's the real part about it is like, like you're saying, even in the situation where you go to the league as a one and done, you 19, and if your family ain't in a certain financial situation, you literally the breadwinner in your lineage and be him voice. Even if I don't know, who gonna tell me no? Cause I'm the one making the ends. Yeah. And if you don't have that direction, you are kind of damn right out the loop. That's but, true. Nah, I mean, it's a fact. But more to me, like, I get it. I mean, shit. But it's gonna happen. But if you one of them dogs and you get NIL money, it's a good chance. If somebody willing to pay you a million dollars, it's a good chance you probably gonna make it to the league. Yeah. Like, you not For getting sure. that much money and you like, nah, it's a good chance you probably gonna go to another level. So, I mean, it's to each his own. But I got a different approach to it, like a different question to you. Like, the U was so big. Like, when I remember watching Miami when I was younger, it was like, y'all was like an NFL team. It was like, everybody yeah. wanted to go there. I wanted to go there and play basketball because you of the You should have went, team. man. That would have been <laughs> they, they had a dude named Eddie Rios. You probably, I don't know if you know Edwin him. Edwin Rios. He was the number, like, supposed Shout to be tell, one of the top guys. Tell him your story, King. And he went, he ended up going to Miami, so I took Miami off my list. And Jack McClinton was there. Yeah. yeah he was killing at that time. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> do you think Miami will ever get back to, like, how y'all had it? I mean, it's cool, but y'all had it to an elite level. It was like an Alabama is right now, even though they struggling a little bit this year, but it was, I think, it was a firehouse. Yeah, for sure. No, I think it's gonna come down to like, like we got a we got a coach that's on the parks. He's dealing with the the youth. He's involved with the people that's actually gonna push that thing to the next level. And I think that's what it boiled down to. If you look at all the top players, they use a lot of them coming from Florida, but Nick Saban and Ohio State, they going and grabbing these kids. Mm -hmm. So if we're able to keep the kids on, then. Yeah, we can get back. If we can't keep our Florida, South Florida kids home, it's gonna be tough. Because if you look at all the top players, you know, they're coming and recruiting these guys. And I don't know how much, especially with the NIL thing, you know, to what I don't know how deep certain people's pockets are, mm -hmm. but you're gonna be able to come and grab some kids. So as long as we're able to compete with them from an NIL standpoint and keep the kids home, we got a good chance. But it's going to take that because the game changed now. Like you, now you're going to see, you're going to see schools that's they willing to spend the money. They going they school going to go up. They get the right coach, spend the money. Like look at Colorado for example. They going up. Talk about it. You know that's a program that you know it hasn't been successful in a long time. But they're doing something to get those kids. They got prime, but they're giving prime some ammunition. And Would so, you went to Colorado if he recruited you? If you was coming out right now? Nah, I, I'm 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 South Florida. Like, like I can't like I can't leave South Florida. You're like that's 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 home. You know, it's the same mm -hmm. thing if I went to if I went to Ohio State or something. You know, I like I want to be where I'm comfortable at. So like I wouldn't I wouldn't have gone personally because that's all I knew was South Florida. You know, but like if my if my child was like, hey, in the position I'm in now, 
And he wanted to go, oh, yeah, because I know he's going to get the best coaching. Sure. He's going to get a father figure. He's going to be, he's going to get everything he wants. You know, so for a lot of these kids, I can see why they go, because they're getting more than a coach. You know, sure. a lot of these dudes, they're just coaching. Man, this man really, like, parenting. You yeah, know, he, he take like, the time you can, to learn each player. Yeah, you can take, you can take your, like, you can say, man, drop him off over there with Prime and I ain't worried. You can sleep yeah. good. You can't say that about every coach. And I think uh, we were talking about this earlier. I think what's so crazy about what he's doing up there is the fact that he's already surpassed college coaches as far as influence wise, especially being a black man. I don't think we'll probably find another influential coach in the college football rankings close to Dion for a very long time period. Based yeah, off him being tough. Dion off the field, what he did on the field, and just his approach to leadership. Like what he did with Jimmy Hornson in the middle of that game and him speaking about it was crazy to me. And no disrespect to none of those coaches. Obviously, you know, Nick Saban is one of them goats, but you won't see that from him or won't be publicized enough. I think for as far as a culture and impact thing, I don't think we'll ever see a coach as close to Dion in a very long time period. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough because he brings so much, but there's a blueprint being created. Yeah. And so yeah, yeah. now, now you're gonna see kids getting more attention. You're gonna see more of the stuff. Because if you're a player, you look at things from one perspective and then you step on the other side, but you still remember that first side. And so all Prime doing is showing y'all the things that he wish he had or he's seen it from a player's perspective and finding that happy medium because we still got to take care of business. Like He never get away from hard work, doing mm -hmm. the things you got to do to be to win. To be successful, you got to do certain things. He never get away from that. But he still, he don't trip on the things that other people trip on. They'll say, oh, well, you're on your Instagram too much. He telling you, he put Instagram names on the back. Let me Ugh, get rid of all fire. that. You know, so he like that cool that cool uncle that you can go around and be yourself. Yeah. And those kids going to gravitate to him. I think if the next wave of coaches, if they don't take on that, they're going to lose out. Yep. You know, because you're going to have to be more than just, hey, why are you not at practice? Why are you doing it? You're going to be, you're gonna have to be that father figure. And a lot, of, like, a lot of us, you know, a lot of us, we didn't have those father figures. And so we find them in somebody along our journey. And in the pros, Tony Dungy was the same thing, but a different approach. Nice. Yeah. But he was the same exact thing when it came to athletes, especially a lot of um, athletes that's um, from single parent home. It's like you can gravitate like, man, dang, that's a, that's a cool, like, that's a cool daddy. You know, that's a cool man. And you're like, man, I can, I can rock with that. Like, but you're still going to do exactly what he say, but it's the way he said. it. Yeah. You ain't going to be like, Nah, I ain't doing this. Nah, you're going you gonna to rock out and be like, man, I don't want to let him down because he treats you like a man. But it's super important for him to let you know that, like, look, a hey, family first, I'm here for you. It's bigger than sport. Mm -hmm. Once the athlete feel that, you got that athlete. Yeah, facts. You would have went there, Shiloh? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you would have chose, if you played football, if you was a nah, receiver? Nah, I wouldn't have went to Colorado. Right now, you wouldn't fucking with it? Nah. Why not? That ain't my type. I ain't a highlight. Like, I ain't a you that type of person. Nah. Yeah. I went to Wake Forest. And that's what I'm saying. I, I said, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm trying to agree with you. Damn. Nah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that ain't my style. They 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 got too much going on. Damn. I'm I, a chill. I'm chill. Yeah. But on the long haul of the coaching shit, I think what's super fire with you coaching on Armor Mater is the fact that they get to see living proof. Yeah, I was in these same hallways y'all was in. Yeah. I got the but boot. I'm on I'm on that prime at Pike. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's Put what I'm your saying. Instagram up. They yeah. gonna see the yeah. videos coming. That. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm on all that. Yeah. Bro, on that. Yeah. Yeah, this first sure. season about to get real. Yeah, for sure. Out the gate. Now, Ish, obviously we talked about how you went crazy in college. Now it's time to go to the pros. Uh, how was your like draft process? And did you have an idea that you was gonna be in Indianapolis? No, nah, I really didn't like, I never spoke to the coach. Never talked to them. And that what was so crazy about it. Like I, I was like, man, long as all I was tripping, all I was like, man, long as I get in the first round, I ain't really tripping. I just want to go be an NFL player. And then as you start getting close to this thing, you start shaping up to where, you know, you saw Marshall Falk get traded. Well, mm -hmm. the Colts got to get a running back. And, so, and everybody thought it was going to be Ricky Williams. So you're like, okay, well, I know I'm going to be like in the top 10, top 15, regardless. So you never knew, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. And, but at the same time, you just keep working. Like, I never went on, like, the banquet circuit. I didn't go nowhere. I just stayed in Miami. I stayed in Miami and just worked and just continued to work. I didn't have an agent. Like, I wouldn't get an agent. 
I was like, I didn't believe in getting an agent or none of that. I just like, man, look, I'm going to get myself drafted. I don't need nobody. All I need to do is yeah. stay here and work. And so let's continue working. And draft day came. I had my little Nokia phone. Like, nobody had, like, I'm the plug. I'm the one you call. If I'm going to get drafted, I'm going to be the first one. I ain't going, you ain't got to go to no agent. You ain't got to go to nobody. Call me. And it went down from there. Damn, they called you on the Nokia with the snake Nokia, on there? Nokia, <laughs> you know. The, 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 yeah. Hold on. So, what made you go that route? Because uh, only one person I know, John Lamar. Uh, I knew Gilbert Arenas had no agent, and I knew Jalen Brown and maybe Ray Allen. What made yeah. you not have an agent? Because I like, like you meet these people. Like I ain't really trust nobody. First of all, I'm like, all I got is the people who I know. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you got all these people that start to push up on you. It started happening my sophomore year. They start to push up. So like, I'm not trusting nobody. And then when I start looking at the, when you start looking at the overall thing, it's like, like what purpose are they gonna serve me? You know, I think an agent is good for, for the player that needs, like, somebody to push or that can get them, you know, kind of go speak for them. Mm -hmm. But a player that's knowing he going in the first round, yeah. it's like, dog, why you give up your leverage? Like, you control the cards. And so for me, I was I was like, nah, I don't need nobody. All I need to do is, I got the University of Miami. I don't want to go nowhere. Everybody that was getting money, they ain't doing nobody getting a credit line. So they ain't giving you no money. Mm. And then, And then I had them flipped it. I had every agent that was recruiting me, giving me money, but I had no ties to them. Yeah. So that was how I, I was like, man, I don't see why everybody playing this game the, the wrong way because it's too easy. It's a layup. Like, you looking at, I got, I got 20, 30 of these dudes pushing up on me, trying to do all this for me. And I'm like, well, I'm just finna rock out and, okay, you want to give me some money? You want to do this for me? You want to do, I'm not committed to nobody because I don't need nobody, you know? And so I rolled it out like that. And I look at everybody else. They got credit lines. They got vehicles. They got all I'm like, I don't need that because everything I need is right there. Miami got the, got the um, strength conditioning coach right there. You got all the guys that been to the pros before. I'm like, man, all I need to do is just go kill this fucking combine. If I kill this and I make sure I take care of my business, I already know I'm going first round. And I'm coming from one of the poorest towns in Florida. So it's like, Everything I get is a bonus. And I'm like, really? all I need is money one time. You give me money one time, you ain't got to never worry about me again. You know, because I'm going to do something with that. I'm going to make sure I hold on to that and I'm going to value it. So I wasn't really tripping on, I got to get this agent to do this for me, get this person to do that for me. Like I'm betting on myself. I always bet on myself and I still do it to this day. That's and a it, good, and it works. That's a good thing you just said because it was a thing going around social media recently. And Steven Jackson was saying he would rather have 50 million in a championship instead of 100 million. <laughs> I wonder where I that conversation out, started from. Out, it, it definitely came from our podcast, but it's all good. Shout to us. <laughs> I'm a, uh, I said I'm, I'll get my ring up and take a max deal contract any day of the week. But you saying that remind me what he was saying on the video. Like he came from nothing. If you give him $20 million, he can make $20 million and $250 million or whatever. Cool. <laughs> you saying that, how do you feel about that? Nah, I mean, I'm always going to get the money. Like, yeah. I'm a, like, because in this game, I'm going to give you my all. Yeah. You know, I'm going to give you everything I got. But it's a team game. And right. in this team game, if from the top all the way down to the last player, if they're not doing their part, I can't do nothing about that, but I'm going to give you my everything. But I do know there's a window. And when you know poverty and you know what you don't have, it's like, I'm going to always keep that the main thing. I'm going to always take care of my business. You know, yeah. if you're a person that's coming from, from the financial success or you already had all this stuff, then I can, you can probably see it that way. But us, man, like, man, look, it's a game. I'm going to give you everything I got, but I'm going to need that money. <laughs> because I got to take care down the road. Yep, and it's like, you. man, the line's so long. I still got people asking. You know, it's like thank you. the line too long for us to sit up there and say, hey, I'm going to go and take this championship and take less. It's like, no, man, like you have to be a business person yourself. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and the crazy part is like I've personally been offered Super Bowl rings from players that, had, that needed money. You know, and I'm like, and I just put things in perspective. I'm like, y'all got a Super Bowl. 
but he's trying to sell it. So yeah. it tells you how serious it is. You know, like, man, get me the financials first. Now, when the financials out of the way, okay, I would love to go to the highest of the high. But right now, man, we, we trying to dig out of this hole, this hole that mm -hmm. we was birthed into, you know? Yeah. So, and everybody, like, I think every, I think throughout every family, there's somebody that can break that mold. There's an opportunity that comes, but we don't always recognize it and we don't always chase it. Sometimes we hold each other back or you hold this person back. But if you got an opportunity to take your family out of that situation, there's no way you don't take it. That's 100. And we're going to revisit that um, championship conversation a little bit shortly. That's but y'all, you come to the city, but before you come to the city, you ended up meeting your quarterback before you even knew you was going to be a coach. And what's crazy is, like you talked about Marshall Folk, you know, that was a big deal for Colts fans letting him go. And then number Jeff from the running back. Whole city thought, you know what I'm saying, year before we had Ryan Leaf and Peyton Manning. I don't know what the fuck they was on thinking it was supposed to be Ryan Leaf, but it was damn sure they got it right with Peyton Manning. And then come back next year with you, everybody's like, oh, Ricky Williams, Ricky Williams. And then we get Edge. And some people are like, why did we do that? And then you came in first year and went fucking crazy. I think it's like everybody, that tell you the importance of advertising. Mm -hmm. You know, advertising, like that's why they pay so much for the Super Bowl advertising because they can push anything or can push the mind in any direction. But when you have a, a person that know what they're doing, it's like Ricky's a great running back, you know. But for the Colts offense, it takes a different type of back. And that's why it's like you couldn't, you couldn't say, okay, yeah, he's better or I'm better. You have to say what's best for that's this it. situation. You know, because Ricky Williams wasn't somebody that had to sit up there and pass pro all the time. I had to pass pro at the University of Miami. We had to block. We had to do all those things. In the coach's offense, you got to do those things. You got to bury the catch. I don't know how well they catch or whatever, but me, I was one time about to be a receiver. So I can catch the ball and I can run the ball. So when you're talking about what makes sense for the Indianapolis coach, not what makes sense from an advertising or from a popularity standpoint, you know, Bill Polian and Mr. Ursa, they, man, they they understand what it takes to build a championship team. So they did what's best for the organization, not best from a popularity standpoint. I think sometimes people get caught up in trying to win people over versus saying, I'm going to do what's best for me. I'm going to do what's best for y'all. I'm, I'm not going to do what's best for me. And then all of a sudden, you know, if things don't work out, they still going to switch out on you. Well, yeah. Ryan Leaf and Ricky Williams would have been a nasty combo. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. In another timeline, the coach had Ryan Leaf and Ricky Williams. And they were outside. Ass. Ricky Williams would have been. Goddamn. Hey, shout nah, out to Ricky. Ricky Run. Hey, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky was hanging. Hey, Ricky, Ricky was cold. That ball, man. Ricky definitely Ricky. cold. He definitely was Ricky cold. But they, they didn't like his out off the field shenanigans. Though. Oh, in this state, boy, the way they be acting towards us, they would have hated Ricky. Ricky was the first Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> Talk about it. <laughs> the first pack on deck. And they was hating. <laughs> <laughs> yes. when, you, when you look at the running back field now, who, who like remind you of yourself? Like uh, my before Zeke, yeah, got, before he stopped, when Zeke was on his thing, he was he was running real solid, like low pad level, finished the run strong. You know that was that was one person I was like, yeah, he he got that total package game. You know, right now I got to kind of see who the new wave of guys because right mm -hmm. now, you know, this is it's turned to a passing league, so you don't really get a chance to see who can do it all. Right now, McCaffrey probably the best running back out nah, there because yeah, he, he can do both. Every game. Yeah. I got a question right. off that one. What about out of the uh, Miami running backs? Clint Portis, Willis McGahee, or Frank Gore? Who, out of them three, who you I think? Always, I always, like, I think it's a situation. Oh, it's okay. all situational. It's like, everybody always try to compare, like, who the best running back? Like, I always defer because, like, man, I'm already stamped. Go oh, team, go no, no, team. No, 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 for sure. I was just saying, who yeah, but I be like, you you? Nah, it's like everybody's style different. Like, uh, okay. man, Portis, Portis can, if Portis took football more serious, yeah. Portis would have been killing it even more in the league. That's your man's you know? too. Man, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And then you got like Frank, man, you, if you look at what Frank went through, Frank show you what it's like to have it in, in here, you know? Go. And then Willis, man, if Willis don't get hurt, man, Willis cold. Whoa. Willis, Willis raw, man, you know what I'm saying? Back, so. Bro. We had dudes that that they had their own style, but at the end of the day, they was great. And mm -hmm. everybody has a story. It's like when you break, when you look at everybody, you're like, man, I'll take any one of them any day. And 
I don't even have to look back. For sure. Last yeah. running back question, I promise. But we look at today's curve climber running backs, look at the situation with the coach with like JT and them figuring that out. And then you look in the way that they're doing running backs in the market for it now. Obviously, we know how great you are. You would have adapted to sleep because you can pass block and you can catch for no problem. But if you were coming up in this era, would you maybe have thought about playing a different position? Obviously, you say you might have been a wide receiver at one point. With the way that they have the market now, would you thought about switching positions or like your kid wanted to play that position, Pauls? Uh, would you want to like steer him away from playing running back? Well, I, I do have a son that plays running back. He's at Howard. Mm -hmm. He's actually pretty nice, you know, but I told him like, you better up your passing game. You better get to where you're running your routes because if you don't do that, you know, you start looking at this thing, it's not going to work in your favor. But if you can play three downs, you can be a third down back, you can catch that ball, you can block, you can do it all, you got a better chance of being one of the top paid. And you look at the, t the highest paid right now is McCaffrey, but he can do it all. Yes, sir. And so as a running back, I think, you know, I think they're going to need some, they're going to need to be some adjustments. May, of course, the running back not getting treated that we all, the way we all think is fair, but, you know, it's a business and we know it's going to happen however it happens. So I just think you up your game, you learn how to get in that passing game, become part of that. Because if you look at Debo Sam Samuels from the 40s, now he's yeah, running back. Yeah, you know, he's like, not a wide receiver. Yeah, he can do it all, you know. So, and McCaffrey, so I think, I think the evolution of the game is going to turn into where you got the bird to do a little bit more because it's not so much as we're just going to sit there and just pound this thing no more. It's, it's not happening. It don't look like it unless there's some rule changes or something. That's real. Now, I got to ask, man, because you're so important to this city and the culture that you brought to the city. After you get drafted, you come here. What was your first impression like being in that? No, nah, it was cool. Like, it was, um, you know, it was, it, it was different, but, like, people was nice. You know, it's like, in Nap, it's like black, white. You know, it ain't like... Yeah, a little bit more one than the other. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, down south, you know, you don't know what you're talking to, you know, until they actually say something. You know, so it was it was more of like cut and dry to where it's like, okay, this the way the city go. And then once I linked up with with um with our people, mm -hmm. it was like, man, it's it's actually pretty cool because now I can move around in these areas and and I wasn't really tripping. It gave me, you know, and, and then they they was they was inviting, they was welcoming. And so it wasn't really no thing where you like, like, I'm out of place. Mm. You know, it, but and the thing I was so young, and and you in a situation where, like I don't I don't know what's good or bad. I don't know if you what is called Hallville or whatever. Well, tell us about some of the spots <laughs> you was pulling up to though. They'd be you? like, man, don't go like. And then I used to like go to high school football game. Oh, you don't want to go to Arlington? I'm like, man, I'm going over there. You know, they had like, you at the Arlington nah, Ripper game. You embraced yeah. the oh oh oh, yeah, buddy, Derek back. Ellis, yeah, man, he D. was Ellis, cold. D. Ellis, he was cold, cold. nice cold running back. And I'm like, man, I'm going to the game. Like that's what we do. Like we go to football games. We go and we get in the thick of things. And you know, you get all these warnings like, hey, don't go here, don't go there. And I'm like, I don't really know no difference. You know. <laughs> it's like, man, we're going we're gonna to go here. We're going to go hang here. And we're going to kick it. And of course, you know, like when you grow up in the elements, you already kind of know like, okay, you know what to look out for. You know, okay, yeah, this, this thing looking a little out of pocket right now. Yeah, I need yeah. to move around. And so you're going to move a certain way. And man, that was nothing but love from the beginning. And then it's like the things that we like to do, like we like to come outside. We like, you know, I was into the old school cars. I got the got still the got the old school. Yeah. Pulled up with it in the city a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, and it's like the other day. How, that was said we could have went to Riverside, but they said it's Sunday. We yeah. were trying to go well, on Saturday. They yeah. shut it down. No they just shut it down last week. But yeah. they said they had. Oh, they did. They yeah, did. Yeah, it's, it's a done. car show tomorrow too. Yeah. For oh, sure. yeah. Somewhere, but I got something to do. But that was that was cool. Like we bring the cars up here, and then you start getting the teammates from Florida. And from down south, like, hey, man, let's let's get these cars. We all young. You know, we young. We're like, man, let's get out. Let's flex through the city. Let's have fun. And, man, that, it was fun. That was, that was like, gave, that gave us something to do, especially in, um, when you had to come to, like, what, um, the workouts for off-season workouts. Mm -hmm. now, that's the dead time. Yeah. And so, but the weather's good in that. You come up here, you get to pull out, pull out the vert, go through, hang out. 
And so it was actually pretty cool because we brought that South Florida, like our comfort zone right up here. And it wasn't like you was out of place. Man, Edge is on track. Edge was outside, dog. Yeah. He was on Riverside on Sundays. You was in Ripple. Yeah, what everywhere. Was, you and Lance Stevenson, the first the, man, the, the only Kings people, of Brown Ripple. Man, y'all the only people to city <laughs> love, man. You and Lance. Man. What was your Monday night spot? We used to have this um at the mall. I used to have this Monday night football. That was that was the spot. Like oh, okay. every time. Like I even brought Peyton down. You know, brought Peyton down. You one brought Pete Murder outside? Yeah. Like, but it was, but it was, but that was part of our team bonding. Mm. And Pete, he's super cool, man. P, he cool as hell, man. I don't think people get it. The real people don't get the chance to see how cool dude is, you know. But, you know, that's to each is all, you know, like shit. We still vibe, we still kick it. But he he came out to Monday night football. That was actually cool. And a lot of people was surprised or shocked. And I'm like, man, I thought this what ball players do. Yeah, yeah. Because down in South Florida, like, man, the Dolphin player, they outside. You know, the Heat player, they out. You know, you used to seeing that. <laughs> but they kind of had to, Edge, because y'all was bigger stars than them. But at the same time, you getting the pros, man. It's like you, like you made it. So it's like, man, every chance I get to celebrate and hang out, I'm out there. You know, it's like you got to be out there. And it's like, and so I thought it was the norm. And then everybody was like, I can't believe you here. I can't believe you outside. I'm like, I thought that's what we do because like, man, you know how hard it is to make it? Like, man, we made it. I'm 21 years old. It's up. Man, I'm not giving up my Monday or Tuesday when <laughs> I don't have to, you know? For sure. How was that like for you? Obviously, once you got acclimated in ATL, like, how would you embrace going outside? Because the city fuck with you. They still fuck with you to this day. Atlanta's uh, one of our biggest markets in the podcast. Uh, Shout out to ATL. A, it was up. <laughs> it was up. 20, I was 20 when I got there. It turned 21. It was up, man. I was with a whole bunch of people who had a whole bunch of money, so I didn't have to spend any money. Yeah. So mm -hmm. all the old heads, Josh, Joe, Jamal, they all took care of me. So I went out with them. And then Mike Bibby was my vet. And Mike Bibby wanted to go out yeah, all the Bibby. time. Like he was getting a little later in his career. So yeah. he was like, he was outside. So anytime I wanted to go anywhere, he like, let's go. And then I had to pick him up. I had to do all the rookie stuff. So <laughs> Damn, you was the first Uber. Ball. Yeah, I was an Uber. I was the first Uber for Bibby. But nah, it, I ain't know nothing different. So when yeah. I got older, like going out still to this day, like now my wife, she'd be like, where you going now? I'm like, man, <laughs> I just gotta move around. Like yeah. I'm used to it. So it's all good though. That's for sure, man. Like you came into the league and the Colts were eh, but then as soon as you got there, it changed. And I remember y'all having that real, real, real important game against my Cowboys. Yeah. How was that playing in that game? Because I know you look forward to that moment. No, nah, that was a game like, you know, it was like we we had been named the baby triplets or the new triplets. And to actually be playing against the Cowboys, like I, I grew up in South Florida, Deion Sanders. Go. Two, three, nine. He like, he like the legend. So everybody, anything Dion is like, it's up. And so I got a chance to actually be on the field with Dion. You see Mike, you see Emmett, you see Troy. I think one of them didn't play, but we still, you know, you find yourself during the game. You know, you're supposed to be going through your reps. She's supposed to be going through your stuff, but you find yourself steady looking back. You steady looking back. You want to check out like how they did it, what they do. And that was one of the games that you will never forget. And then we actually won that game mm -hmm. here, so that was that was big. That was like uh, that was like one of the things where it's like we've arrived. And I think all of us we embraced that situation because you always got to pay homage to the people that came before you, and those are the reason why you where you at because you have like you have a milestone, you have an example, and they were the example how they worked together. And we just came and we worked together. You no, know, if it's if we got to pass, we're going to pass and I'm going to block every time. Mm. You know, if we got to run, Marvin going to do their thing. You know, they're going to pass block. I mean, they're going to run block out there and do their thing every time. So you embrace it. You know, you start understanding like, man, this is what a team is about. And that's why they were so successful. Who Damn. was your vet? Who was my vet? When you got to the coach, who, who embraced you? And, you know, uh, Cornelius Bennett, you know, he had came from um, Buffalo Bills. He had done, you know, they had success. He was one of the guys. And then other than that, it really wasn't, you know, you know, of course, Marv was there, but, you know, you got to get to know Marv before. Like, Marv don't let you in until you get to know, you know, I was young. Yeah. And so then me and Marv, 
man, me and Marvin became like this, man, like every day. But, you know, when you first get there, probably Cornelius Bennett, he was the guy that was every day telling you how you do this, this how you do that, this how you practice, this how you, you know, you deal with family stuff, this how you, yeah. you know, you, you go about certain things. For sure. Now, obviously, we know what you did with the Colts. Obviously, you know Hall of Fame. We're going to talk about that too. But your last year with the Colts, um, did you think you were going to leave Indianapolis? Or did well, it was you- a numbers thing. Like, and if anybody that put a personal feeling in this business, you set yourself up for failure. Mm. So for me, I've always known that, okay, if the salary cap doesn't go up to certain numbers, it's either I'm going to have to devalue myself or, you know, some a decision has to be made. So I'm never tripping on any of that stuff because I, you remember when I come into this thing, I'm thinking, man, business first. Yep. Because I'm coming to a business, it's business first for me always. And so I ain't tripping on this. I'm not tripping on nothing. It's like, no, you you enjoy the moment. You enjoy the time. We, we, um, we created something special here and it'll always be here. But, you know, when the rules are the rules. And you got to always play by the rules. Damn. But did it hurt a little bit when you was like, all right, I'm in my new situation. We going crazy. Then you look up and it's like, the Colts did what? Like, nah, nah, it, it, nah, because like, you got to remember, you have to, when, when, when you real by what you say mm. and you live by what you say, it don't, it don't move you. You're not affected. Real. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pure. When I say, man, I ain't tripping, I'm really not tripping. When I say I do, I really do. When I say I don't, I really don't. And it's when people, like, I think sometimes when people say something and they have a feeling other than it contradicts what they say, like, you ain't really what you're you saying. Real. Like, me, I'm really what I'm saying. So when I, when it's time for me to move on, you know, and then they get, they got Joseph Adai. Yes, sir. You know, I make sure I let Joseph Adai say everything you need to know. You know, anything you need to know about this offense, I know this offense inside out. I'm going to help you out. I'll teach you anything. Call me. Whatever you need. I want to make sure that you be able to have success in this game, you know? And to a lot of people, they don't think like that. They you know, don't. Because, man, this is my family. You know, it's, it's your family, but at the same time, business trumps certain things. And so, man, I'm not mad to go get some money and move on and not get a chance to go and make new friends and experience something different. And then, plus, it's a challenge for me. I went to one of the worst teams and was able to make it to the Super Bowl. You know, so it's like, when you look Max. back, you're like, Dang, I made a, I, I jumped out on the limb and I, I did something that nobody else probably wouldn't have done. But that's what's part, that, that's, that's part of what makes you you. you like, man, like, I know I'm special. I know I'm somebody that can make a difference or betting on myself. And I went out and I had success. You know, it didn't end the way you wanted to end. Like, you wanted to win that Super Bowl. But you think about it, you're taking a team that never, ever. Did nothing. Nothing. And you're in the Super Bowl. You know, that's that's a big deal. That's a major accomplishment. And then to watch the Colts go to the Super Bowl, it was like down in Miami. I had everybody out hanging out, kicking it, and like, I ain't tripping. And then the owner gave me a ring. You know, it's just it's just out of respect. You know, it's like I ain't play the game, but that just show you how much you mean to the organization sure. and the impact you had. That, man, you know what? This is my family. They're like, you can't sit up there and say, man, this is not my family because I'm over here. Not once. If once you say this is my family, that's your family. Like family's forever. It's like you can't you can't get divorced. That, and that's real. He talk about all the time his um his his temp job he had in Boston, but he talk about how like he really connected with his team for the first yeah, like, not the first time. My temp job. Yeah, man. that was <laughs> he was on the summit. <laughs> I was I was there for about thirty days, late. but it's cool. <laughs> nah, but them really became my bros. Like yeah, them, yeah I I rock with them dudes, man. I was only there for. Three months, three or four months. A little cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, I had some donuts from Duncan, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really like your approach about that is real because a lot of people be, oh, well, I don't like you no more. Like, I done went to war with these dudes. I done got personal relationships. Yeah, just because exactly. I got a different job. That's like in real life, you get mad at somebody, like, ah, I switch jobs. I don't fuck with y'all no more. Like, damn, we was just cool last yeah. week. It's bigger, like, man, a lot of like a lot of people they look at sports and they just keep everything about sports. Man, this is it's real life. Like, these are the people you're going to deal with. Like, still to this day, I make a phone call to anybody on that team. You know, the connection is still there. It's like, how are you going to sit up there and just go against something? And you see somebody doing something 
and they're having success, you're supposed to be so happy for them. You know, it's like, I probably partied more than them. I was like, man, y'all got to go get ready for practice. I'm out. I'm in the <laughs> club. You know, I get to hang out. You know, because, you know, that you have to be a secure person. You know, you can't be weak and you can't be influenced by outsiders. And one thing about, like, the media and the way it's, you know, the, the way it works is to trigger you. You know, nobody can't trigger me because everything is real right here. It's like, I'm not, you're not going to say, oh, well, the coach did you this. Man, the coach took good care of me. You know, I was one of the highest paid running backs through the history of the game. Talk about like, it. How can I be mad at them? And then still, and, and proof that the relationship is strong. Look at where I'm at today. Yeah. I'm still working with the coach. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you can't let people get you off your square. And I think a lot of time away from football, people let outside people influence them. And they mess up things for them going forward. And they don't even see it happening. When this man just played you out of a good position, you know, like, and you tripping on this dude when this dude really got your back. This dude really don't have nothing to gain from you. But now you let somebody get in your ear and trigger you to make you go against this person when this person never had nothing to gain from you and just pure love for you. And now you don't play yourself out of that situation. It's like, I never let nobody play me out of the situation. You're not going to beat me off my square. Evidently, like you said, you can't have nobody in a position to where the game is going to be the game no matter who plays the play. But you're going to have those people who really genuinely care for you who you don't. You don't want to trick yourself out your situation, like you said. And obviously, the way you're still like one of the biggest ambassadors for the coach. Like, anytime it's an event, you see Ed's there, like, you know, it's for real. Like, you still got that same report like you did in the 90s as you do now. And what's more important about that is Hall of Famer. Like, you are a Hall of Fame running back. You are a Hall of Fame player. A lot of people don't make that. And yeah. you did that off being solid. So it make it even better because when you look and see Edge, Edge is Edge. Edge is still outside. I ain't stopped being outside. Yeah. That you are like the icon of like being yourself, taking care of business, and still being respected and put on the pedestal the way you're supposed I'm to. Bubba Chuck. Hey, talk yeah. about it, man. Yeah, you and Chuck. When I used yeah, to be iconic. in Atlanta, yeah, I used to be like, I see Chuck outside. Yeah. I see Cheesecake Edge. I used to be like, <laughs> I, yeah, he cheese, got that Cheesecake yeah, Factory. Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, yeah. At Cumberland, he know what I'm talking about if he listening. I used to be like, <laughs> damn, they just live life. Like, yeah. somehow I got to get there. Like, I don't know, they leave the Phantom outside. He wasn't tripping. Yeah. And then you see Edge, and you see him, they just living, they have enjoying themselves. And I'm like, Man, they doing something right. Life treating them good because uh, sure. some other people I know, they can't go to the club still or they going to the club and like, you know, yeah. searching. You know, you know, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm talking yeah. about. They like, I just, man, when I, when I look, it's like, man, sometimes even when I like talk to like people in the media, like you see somebody got a media job. Yeah. But then when they get off camera, <laughs> they talk they, that they real. The cool, they yeah. the coolest motherfucker. Yeah, like, yeah. Man, hold up, man. You, you not being yourself. You not being man. you. Hey, and that, that always bothers. I'm like, man, like, dog, you going you you got to be what you are. You get the best out of you when yes. you just be who you That's are. It's right. like yeah. people going to accept you and and going through this thing. It's like I got here. I was always me. I said, if I make it to the Hall of Fame. I'm gonna make it to the Hall of Fame being me. And that's one thing I take pride in because you know they got these stigmas on out there that you have to go and suck up to the media or you got to go do this. You got to be politically ready. You got to do all these things when like, man, it's about bottom line. Can you ball? Did you do what it take? And when your number is called, man, they going to they gonna do all they, whatever they do in those rooms. And if it check out, they're going to call your number. How was that for you when you found out you was going to be in the Hall of Fame? Like, obviously you put in the work, you knew you was eligible for it. You should be in there like you are. But how was that process for you and to get that call to find out? How was that for you? For me, it was, it was, I waited so many years. I don't know how many years I waited, but I knew it would happen eventually. But I never was one of those guys that said, I'm going to go to the hotel, wait on a knock. You know, that was kind of the process they had in the past. But I was like, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't with all that monkey. <laughs> now I don't do all that. You know, it's like, gimmick, yeah. I'm not going to put my family through that and I'm not going to waste my time. So I'm going to have everything. I'm just going to live my life as if, like, ain't nothing happening. And if it do happen, man, I'm quick on my feet. I know how to get to the event, you know? And so, you know, I was just laying in the bed, you know, like, I was just chilling, getting ready for the nightlife because it was, it was in Miami. And 
I got the phone call. And when I got the phone call, it's like, it's like, man, that shit real. And next thing you know, everything just, just went full throttle. You know, you only had like an hour or less than two hours to be at this awards show. You had to be, you had to be ready, you know. Damn. Because that's why they want you in the hotel. You know, but like me, I'm like, nah, I'm not, I ain't put myself in that situation. You know, like that, I think that right there builds resentment and anger. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of guys, they be angry. Like I ain't put my, like, you'll never catch me on angry because I'm not about to go sit in a hotel room waiting on a knock. Nah, that's not gonna happen. Cause like they did my boy from the Cowboys. I think Drew Pearson that had him waiting all them years to do that. Like, man, yeah. like you forget how good you were and make you feel some type of way. It's like you said, you got to enjoy your fruit celebrity post football. A lot of people, even in basketball, once they stop playing basketball, life changes. They stop playing their sport, life changes. And you get that doubt and that resentment because you're trying to adjust to a different type of life. For that man to wait that long to get that call was just like, I could see how nerve wracking that is. So there ain't no way you could just sit there and be like, all right, be in this hotel. I hope these niggas knock today. Like, that's nah, a crazy I got, feeling. I got the perfect approach, man. Just like, <laughs> man, just live, you know, just go through, live. Like the one year it was in Atlanta, you know, I ain't get the call, but I ain't trip. I was at a day, go to the day party. You know, it's like, man, you, like, you always like, in life, you got to have these counters. You know, like it's always going to be ups and downs, it's gonna be good things, bad things. But every time something happened that you wanted to happen or it didn't, or it didn't happen like you expected to happen, Man, you got to counter that with something else, you know. So I counter everything with life. Man, what you know? made who like what made you like that? Who like? Man, I just that... think looking at just looking at I, man, like I look at all these people disappointing, and I mean these 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 people that's disappointed in this, and they always blaming this. They got like I'm like man, dog, I made it out of nothing. Mm. Like so, I got a greater appreciation for everything. It's like you can't really get me to trip. Like man, I get to actually leave where I grew up. I get a chance to see the world. I get a chance to be around people. I ain't no way I can trip. Like, how can I trip when knowing where we coming from and then as an African-American, you're looking like, man, we're, we're put in situations where we ain't really able to experience life. So Bro. if I got a chance to experience life, you think I'm going to give that up? You think I'm going to waste any day on some stuff that I can't control? It's like, man, what's next? Okay, we can't go here. Okay, what's next? If I go to a club, somebody say, oh, well, you... All right, cool. That means we need to be somewhere else. You know, That's anything true. I can't get, I just go to something. That, it's not for me. Or like, man, dang, I got to get my weight up. I get my weight up, I'll be back. But right now, they don't see me the way that I probably thought they seen me. Like, everything is up, man. I'm going to have a good day every day. That's why you're going to see me outside every day doing something. And when people look at it like, dang, you out, they think you out just partying, girls. No, nah, outside, man, it's a mentality. Like, man, I'm not sitting around being in a confined area. I'm not being in a space to where I got to do what everybody else traditionally doing. I'm doing whatever I feel like doing that day. You know, and I'm, I ain't gonna never, I ain't, I ain't doing nothing illegal. I ain't doing nothing to hurt nobody, but I'm gonna have some fun. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get all the toys, <laughs> everything to have fun every day. I'm gonna take it back to the field. What was you listening to in the warm-ups to get you prepared for the game? Mm, I had a, I had a strong playlist, but I um, Trick Daddy was down south. Three oh five. You know, Trick Daddy had this one song. I used to listen to every. Nah, it was about my money. <laughs> he got a song. Like, I think I think it's hard. His hardest song to me is about my money, and that was my mentality. Yeah, you know, all the time you listen to a lot of Jay Z. Mm, you know, there we go. Before now. the game, tap in. That's you a know, crazy. You had a Walkman back then yeah, too. Two pop MP threes. Jay Z, Tupac. Trick Daddy. Um, no, nah, got a my yeah. favorite Trick Daddy song is Thug Holiday. Man, you got to listen. Go listen. <laughs> hey. Boy, he's commercial. Man, go go listen mean? to. Thug Holiday was hard. Go listen to hard. About My Money. About listen my to About My I'm Money. It's a it whole, it's like a whole nother mentality, but that was like my mentality in the league. It was like, man, look, I came here to do what I came here to do. Yeah. Because, man, when you, when you able to take care of your mom, like I'm still... To this day, take care of my mom. Nah, I seen like, you got I your mom with. Yeah, yeah, like, mama with. Yeah, like, it, dog, you don't know how good it feel to barely just. I never told this lady no. That was a, I, 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 she's she might say some of the most weird shit to go get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. All I said, okay, give me some time. Get, I'll get it. Uh, like, so I take pride in not saying no to my mama. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And 
football afforded me that, you know? So I got to respect the game. I got to appreciate the game. But when you look at it and you say, man, dang, that's a long run, you know? But I told like, hey, everything you want, you're going to get. You know, you're going to get it. And if I ain't got it right now, and I'm back back on the plane, hitting all the spots. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And I'm going to come home. Anytime I leave home, man, I leave home with a certain amount and I'm going to come back with more. That's always been my mentality. Like, if I leave, I got to come back with more. I ain't coming back till I come back with more. So once you start getting those mentalities or once you start getting that mindset, you know, things change. You know, your perspective mm-hmm. change. And you're like, man, look, my mama ain't going to never have to ask nobody for nothing. You know? And I got brothers. I got everybody else. They, man, y'all just sit back. I got this. You know? And so... That's what I'm going to do every time. And I'm going to stay hustling. I'm going to stay moving regardless of whatever. They be like, man, you done made this. You need to relax. Like, I'm relaxing when I'm hustling. Like, that's therapy to me. You know what I'm saying? Hustling is therapy. You listen to Jay-Z for sure. That's what I'm saying. What's your favorite Jay-Z song? Oh, I got a lot of them, man. Imaginary Player is his top tier. Nah, he got got a lot of them. Yeah, Jay-Z got got a lot of them. But I respect what you're saying about your mom. I'm a little different. I got to tell my mama no. Nah. <laughs> I'll do that to my mama. No, what? Can't say, no, because, like, you got to think. One, first of all, your mom's wants, they decrease. Oh, no. Not mom. You know? <laughs> they going to decrease. No, nah, no, nah, they did. They did. She they always... decrease as you get. Because, like, they start, like, things don't, they don't value those things nah, as much. No, my mama just like to stunt for the church. Oh, well, that's a different... Oh, my, mama, my mama like to show up at Friendship, don't she? Uh, <laughs> show up to Mama T, fifth row in the middle. Nah, man. Like, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta say, yeah, man, because, like, it's too easy. It's like, though, how you can go to the club and spend 10000 20000 30000 nah, don't say that, because she's going to be on me. Ooh. You know what she told me yesterday? Uh, her birthday coming up. She got a celebration coming up. And she like, you would take your friends to Miami and spend yeah. 20000 <laughs> Well, if I say your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows where you're going. That's the girl that's just coming out. He coming out. He waking up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy waking up. <laughs> nah. But no, I just, I just have to do it because, like, I just don't, I don't feel right knowing that, man, this person got my back. And if you play nah, sports facts. or you deal with people, you're going to see so many people turn on you. You're going to see so many people disagree and go in the other direction. Nah, and fuck. wish they can show you up. Yeah. But then you're going to have that few that going to stand down. And it's like, there's no way. If I can make it happen, I'm going to make it happen. Nah, I love his mama. Don't let it. Nah, nah boy, anything my boy. mama asks for, I get it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. She got to start asking my brother, too. He made it to the NBA. I'm just like, you got to mention the point. If she got two kids yeah, with two yeah, you to, That way she get a double dip. Yeah, hey, you, yeah, you going to have to start dipping a little more that way. Yeah. <laughs> He said, use that other phone number. Yeah, <laughs> call that other 317. I'm on every time. Shout out but... to the Mookster. Yeah. <laughs> nah, she nah, can have you whatever. Nah, right. Send her to Jeff. Yeah, nah, she can have whatever she want. It's, it's all up. Man, it's actually cool. It's like a challenge, man. Like me, I'm like, man, I want to see the day that I, the day that I have to say, nah, man, I want to, I don't even know if that, I mean, first of all, that ain't going to happen. As long as I'm able to get out here and hustle and make something happen, I never bear to say no. But I love the challenge. And I, I like, I like the challenge of life because once you, once you get in this position, man, it's like, man, everything is green. Like, you get to do whatever you want to do. Like, I got enough money to take care of myself forever. Like, I'm not a person that want all this and want all that. I just like to live good, have fun, make sure everybody's straight. And so, it's a game to me. That's you know, I, I love the game. I love to sit up there and say, okay, let me go make some money. You know, I might you have sound a- like Mitch. Yeah, yeah. I love the hustle, man. I love, man, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> you know, like man, sometimes food, I push yeah. up and a dude be thinking he's just Shoot me in basketball, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I be like, I man, know. I'm talking about, I, I and it be small money too. But you see, you see how you see how hard I grind for that little money, that little money, that little hey, money. Man, hey, hey, he was shooting for hours, for hours for hey, that little hours. money. No matter what I do for the big money, uh, they go crazy. Man. I don't know if y'all ever get this footage. 
But these two over here, y'all gotta talk about it. Before we get up out of here, y'all gotta talk about that. We ain't gonna knock the hustle. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna reel the hustle. Man, you, the losers get the best interviews, man. So. <laughs> nah, nah, that, oh, shout out, shout shout out, out to, to the solo camera. No, no, no. Shout out to the first finesse two times. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is goddamn. I put that, I put that <laughs> Tito's <laughs> on him. <laughs> hey, hey, Tito's, we on the, hey, Tito's, we on the volume. Cut my man's a check. We ain't uh, playing no sure, more. Like, Send I'm telling you, man, I'm gonna have to change my vodka, man. Tito, don't take Ooh. care of me. Oh man, you know, y'all playing fire. Y'all gonna see this too because we tagging other, y'all. Hey, I had other vodka companies reach out. They was like, man, you always talk about you on the Tito's. I'm like, hey, yeah. step up. Your last chance. That motherfucker Tito's had him hooping like he was on Space Jail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, he fell for it. I was like, hey, but you're gonna see, you're gonna see the footage. Main man. I went to Main Man in the camera. I said, Main Man, they always fall for this. <laughs> uh, shout out to uh, Main Man. Shout out to Main Man. Shout out to my uh, man, he, got sure. his own, he got his own footage. Yeah, 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 I got my own footage. Hey, he do. He called. Nah, I told see, you they called. Hey, you got to remember, Deion Sanders teaches you a real good lesson. You better keep some receipts because yeah, you that's don't. Yeah, that's Them a fact. people going to sit up there and blast you. They tried to blast Prime. Prime went, Prime went right in the archives. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah he did. Man, look. Always need the receipts. Yep. Sure. I always keep We appreciate you coming through again, though, bro. For sure. Man, Thank you so time, much, man. man. man Seriously. Sure. Real definitely. love in the city. If y'all act right, y'all might see that footage, you know what I'm saying? Be here and Edge out here on the oh, court that, going no, crazy. Ain't no, they might. These niggas call me. I just saw he called me laughing on the phone. <laughs> like, they dropping that footage. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> It's gonna be some footage, man. Hey, yeah, I got the footage. Is, yeah, uh, they was dropping yeah. that footage but, for sure. Hey, but I lost. You two, might get some action, man. You might get I was some action. I shoot from half court. We get, though, but we getting on the dice. Yeah, man. I had to go. I had to go against the NBA play. Hey, <laughs> oh, bro. Are you you got T money too? I was shooting from nah, half court. Nah, nah, nah. T was trying. T was trying to get him back. T really, was trying to get back for him. Kind of finessed me too, but we'll talk about that off camera too. <laughs> also, I, I didn't quit, and it was we had a me and you had a five dollar bet that I didn't quit. No, nah, I was still playing. I was still playing too. I nah, mean, we the, not doing the court this right there. Turn the to <laughs> that. I was still playing. I had a man, five look, man, was look. left on the hey. table. Hey. Hey. Shut up. Hey, endurance pause is crazy. Hey, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm telling you, we outside all night, man. Like, that's hey. That's crazy. And, and look, <laughs> hey, man, he, he hey, look, get we, tired, we, we, You man, know, like, hey, you, you care about the little outfit you got on? I don't you care about, about the little outfit the shoes you got on? I don't care about mine. I don't care. Turn the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't scared him now. I ain't yeah. worried about it now. I ain't scared. I'm going to be hit it, off with hey, five. shooting for three and a half hours, man. Nah, I got shit. We got episode. We got shit to do. I done scared this man now. You ain't scared I done me. scared. I ain't worried. Damn. If they say, hey, you want to go shoot against Edge, he going to find every excuse in the no, book. No, I'm not. I really. No, I, I, because, I if I ask, ask, because if I ask him right now, you want to turn them lights on, watch what he going to say. Yeah. Yeah. No, I really got something to do tonight. <laughs> no, nah, to real shit. I really do got something to do tonight. Man, push I'm it on, man. I'm going to hey, let you have the fool on camera. Look, what, what you going to make where you going? Ooh. I ain't gonna make nothing where I'm going. Go, you know go, that's real that shit. No, that's real shit. Let's go hundred dollars shot. But, right but I got, now. I gotta go. I gotta go. See, I got it, man. I got it where I want it. See, I put him in a chokehold now. No, no, I got it. Hey, it's real. The volume. I ain't gonna lie. Oh yeah. Hey, the volume. Kick him a little bit more. I'm about to get some of that. I ain't gonna lie. Edge might be the best shooter I see that play football. Cause sure. Don't tell nobody that, man. Don't nah, now you know, throw my Gates, action. Antonio Gates can shoot too. Yeah, he can. Man, hey, don't throw my action, man. Let them be the best, man. <laughs> All right. I, I just fall sure. up in. I ain't gonna I lie. When you hit 32 in a row that one time, I'm tired of this shit. <laughs> I gave up. Nah, I was going crazy. You, man. But All don't facts. don't give my game up, man. Hey, I ain't gonna give you a game. Hey, up. man, listen. We, we I've been doing this for a long time, man. Wait, hey, when you started teaching him how to shoot, that started getting ridiculous. Nah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's when it started. Yeah, that's when he's out of pocket. Yeah, that's when I was like, all yeah, right, he, hold on. I'm like, all right, this nigga, he's the Illuminati. Or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah see, <laughs> you don't put that on. Nah, what he did was, man, like he he judged me. See, I I do something to people that judge me. That's how it is. Anybody that judge me, man. I'm aimed at you, man. Because I'm like, look, man, you ain't supposed to judge me, man. Give me a chance. Don't look at my first shot. <laughs> that first was, shot was crazy. It was nasty. <laughs> and it had my man's going crazy. That first like, shot was crazy. I was like, this is free money. Yeah, when yeah, I see him yeah. come out the sweatsuit and put the Tito's down, I said, okay, my boy getting it for him. Nah, yeah. No, he shout out to my first five, and then all of a sudden, but see, we going to play. One, I want next time we come, you here forever. But I, we, we playing one-on-one. That's oh, okay. Nah. We playing one-on-one. For one-on-one, I'm going to tell you. You ain't gonna beat me first of all. I am. But so wait, I'm putting you in a post. I promise small. you ain't gonna beat me. But this one's 45, saying. it's over this to one, me. But this is what I'm telling you. This is what I'm telling you. 
Yeah, we're gonna play. You're gonna have to wear some for, real basketball hey, shoes. Nah, not them Usain Bolts. Now with you, you get some real. Now you, you one of the people. You, you don't pay instantly, so you gotta have your money all <laughs> tight. <laughs> you know, you got this little. You got this little, this little delayed thing. You got this little. I got to go bar. I got to go round it no, up I thing. I don't know what it is. Yo, we gonna tell hey, the real it story. Took, it took my man a week to pay that little money. Man, so man, so man, if I'm going, if man, I'm going man, play man, against man, you, man, man had a miscommunication. Hey, nah, we gonna put the first man, man, man was here. Hey, putting the money on the wood. Everybody, on. everybody, everybody hey, have they been? But, nah. Forget what I was gonna say. What you said? You gonna put it on the wood? We gonna put the money. And we gonna play. We gonna put the money. We gonna on put the wood. a lot Pause. of money. We gonna, that's Cause crazy. I'm only gonna play one game. That's fine. No, let's play best out of three. No. Let's play one game. No, you got no. Let's energy. play for big. I want to play for one big stakes because I'm gonna be. It don't. I'm gonna beat, no, <laughs> beat you, man. I'm gonna beat you, man. Like I'm gonna like, beat you. I see you cross over and pull up. I said, Oh, he Christmas, man. He's a set shooter, Bruce Boy. That's man. <laughs> this <laughs> man right here. <laughs> I saw y'all the loser get his best interview. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, no, we, here, no. we told y'all when we on season two, volume, we like this. Shout out to Edge for pulling up again. This is family. You're going to see this face a lot more in this seat. Like, share, subscribe. Shout out to the Patreon gang. See y'all next week.